In front of us here we have the next generation of action cameras for RC enthusiasts. This is the Run Cam 2 action camera. Let's check it out. I've been meaning to review this camera for a while now. I purchased this camera from Banggood. Open the box and this is what you're presented with, the Run Cam action camera. There are two colours to choose, orange and grey or silver. I chose the orange. Having a good look at this camera, look at the size of that lens. That is absolutely ginormous. The actual material is a very smooth surface. It doesn't have a furry surface like the Mobius camera does. Uh, that's going to mean that um, adhesive tape like a double-sided uh, Velcro will stick very nicely to this. It's a little bit larger, a little bit uh, thicker than the Mobius, but um, being able to remove the battery uh, behind this cover makes it lighter than the Mobius, so that's going to be a bonus. Before we get into the camera, let's see what else is in the box. So we are presented with a user manual describing all the features of this camera. Fantastic. And we also have another box inside a box. And inside this box, we have all the accessories that come with this camera, starting with some uh, adhesive Velcro. That's handy. And two Velcro straps, also very nice. Uh, we have a camera mount and what looks like a camera tripod mount. And also another lens hood. The camera comes with a lens hood already on it and it looks like there's another one inside that bag so that could be useful. And lastly in the box we also have a uh, micro USB port, uh, sorry USB cable. Only short though. Not sure about that but it's not like you know there's a shortage of these cables. I've probably got a dozen of the long ones lying around. And lastly inside the box, ah yes this is the cable I was after. We have our USB to power in and also video out. Yes, you can power this camera straight from two cell to four cell on your uh, on your quadcopter or your plane. And also you can um, get the video out from there as well in that one cable. Uh, another benefit of this is the latency out of the AV port here. Only 40 milliseconds latency if you're recording at 720 uh, P 120 frames a second or up to 60 milliseconds if you're recording at the full 1080p uh, 60 frames a second. And the remaining highlights of this camera is inbuilt Wi-Fi, RF shielding, digital image stabilization and various video and uh, photo recording modes, photos up to 4 megapixel stills. Taking a closer look at this camera we have the power button on top which is surrounded by an LED ring we have the Wi-Fi button, we have another LED indicator, we have the microphone up the front, uh, we have various ventilation holes on the bottom and on the sides, uh, and lastly we have the rear door. Now the easiest way that I've found to open this rear door is to put some pressure on that grip area and slide back toward that arrow. So I'll push down there, slide back, and it opens out uh, quite nicely. That's good I guess because it's not just going to pop off in a crash. Lifting out the cover, uh, that exposes the battery and also the micro SD slot compartment. I have a Samsung 32 gig card here. Uh, it goes in upside down like that, pushes in and is spring loaded. To remove the battery, there's that little tag there. We can uh, grab that tag and pull the battery out. The battery is 3.7 volts, 850 milliamps. So one cell, 850. And without the battery, and this is how I'll be flying it on my quadcopter, it's 15 grams lighter and it is very, very light without that battery. As you can see, the camera is basically hollow. Upon first purchasing the Runcam camera, it's highly recommended to upgrade the firmware in the camera before using it. I've downloaded the latest firmware. I've followed the user guide on the Runcam uh, website on how to do that. I've also downloaded the Android app on my phone. It's also compatible with uh, iPhone as well. So I'll launch the uh, Android Runcam app, click the connect button. <laughs> to turn on Wi-Fi, it's a short tap of the Wi-Fi button. You'll see the LED here starts blinking blue. This really connects first go. I'll hit retry on my phone and hopefully we shall get a connection. Looking pretty good and we are connected. Fantastic. So I can now move my hand in the way of that and you can see that on the screen. Beautiful. So we have a live view on the uh, application. We also have other options or basically all the options we can choose from your phone. 
Uh, first of all, we have auto white balance. We have uh, a few presets for white balance, including cloudy, tungsten, day, night, that, that type of thing. We have exposure mode. You can manually change the exposure. You can change the field of view from um, wide, medium, and uh, narrow. Uh, we also have uh, metering mode. This is for the auto exposure of the camera. So we have three options here, average metering, center weighted average metering, and spot metering. Uh, we can also flip the image on the camera. Uh, so if you have this installed upside down, for example, on your craft, well, you can flip it in the menu here and you'll get the correctly orientated image. Flip that back. Uh, we can also change the resolution from here. So by default, it's recording at 1080p 60. We can change to between 30 and 60 frames a second. We can go up to 1920 by 1440, or we can go down to 720p at 120 frames, or down to 640 by 480 at 240 frames. And lastly, we have the option here for slow-mo. So just by pressing that, we can turn slow-mo on and turn slow-mo off. Further down, we have the video modes. So by default, we're in photo, uh, video, sorry. The next one is photo. Changes to photo. You can see that's gone green. You can take a photo from here as well. Photo taken, beautiful. We have time-lapse photo. So you can take multiple bursts of photos. Uh, we have burst mode as well, so we can take a, a succession of photos. Uh, we also have what looks like time-lapse video recording as well. We can also change to full screen mode by pressing that button. We are now uh, full screen on the mobile phone. There is, there is some lag there. You wouldn't use that uh, as your live FPV view. You still want to use... Uh, the analog video out because it is quite laggy but I guess if it was only a slow moving drone that was just hovering you could potentially use that. And lastly we have the settings button up the top right hand side that gives us the option to turn on or off the date stamp on the recorded video, enable or disable the audio within the video. We can adjust the AV out coming out of the camera so we can adjust the power supply frequency 50 hertz if you're in Australia, 60 hertz if you're in the US, we have TV mode. We can choose between PAL and NTSC. Uh, we can set the Wi-Fi settings. We can see the SD card capacity. We can format the SD card from here. We can reset to factory defaults. And we can view the uh, application version and the firmware version of the camera. Unfortunately, to turn digital image stabilization on or off, you have to do this via the on-screen menu. You can't do this via the app. Run cam, what are you thinking? As I'll be using the cable not only for video out but to power the run cam action camera as well, I only want one connector for both power and video. You can see here it's presented in two connectors. Quite simple, I'd like to move the positive wire from this connector into the spare socket on this connector here. So using something sharp like a little hobby knife, all I want to do is lift up that little finger holding that uh, connector in place. It's just locked in by that finger. Once lifted up, you can pull out the cable. Comes out very easy. And we can now slide that exact same cable and connector into the spare port of the other uh, servo connector here. Only, only goes in one way, which allows it to clip in. Push that in. And it clicks in like so. That's now locked in. That is now one cable for power and video. My vehicle of choice to test the run cam is the brand new Peon Pro uh, quadcopter frame. I haven't released this yet on Thingiverse. It is coming. Uh, I have done a whole bunch of crash testing with this and it has survived, which I'm really impressed with. The only thing that breaks, of course, are these props more often than not. Um, so in here, I've just got the CCD camera uh, mounted in there currently. What I will do is I want to mount the run cam uh, in there somehow just like this. I've already printed out uh, an adapter for that and I'd like to maintain that 10 degree uh, incline as you can see on that current CCD camera there. So bear with me while I change over the CCD camera here for the run cam. And here's the run cam mounted in the Peon Pro frame. The first thing you'll notice is it's sticking out the front by about one inch. That's because the total length of this frame from front to rear is only 11 centimeters. I've, I've dropped off about two inches in length compared to the uh, original Peon frame. As you can see, 
about there. So I'm going to have to do something in regards to having optional mounts here just to give the um, action camera some extra protection. But uh, besides that, it's in there fairly well secured. I wasn't able to get the um, full 10 degrees inclination out of that, but I've got some inclination. So I will be able to do some you know, fast forward flight there and have the horizon uh, dead center. Uh, also, you can see there's a lot of gap in there. Um, with the CCD camera that I've got, it's just an El Cheapo one, so it's 32 centimeters by 32 centimeters. so I need all that height just to house the CCD. If you're using a smaller camera, you'd be able to use smaller standoffs and have this top platform, top platform a lot lower. Um, you'll be able to save probably 15 millimeters in height just by uh, using a, uh, a smaller camera. But here it is, it's mounted. The battery is removed. I have the battery over here, so it's not plugged in. So what I'll do, I'll power it up and I've got the recorder going on the AV input. I'll just hit record on that now and I'll power this up so you can see what I see. Okay, we've got the on-screen display and no video yet. That's because the run cam hasn't automatically powered up. You'll see the red flashing light on there. I'll um, have to put my finger in there and hold on to it for three seconds to power it up. There we go. You can see the run cam logo. And that's the image. Okay, it looks like we've got a couple of black bars, top and bottom. So it's producing a widescreen image. Okay, that's interesting. And just looking at uh, the speed. Oh, that's very quick. Okay, it's not recording yet, but I'm quite happy with that. I've got it set to 1080p 60. Let me hit the record button. Okay, so now we're recording. And you can see, okay, you can see the record box flashing on the TV overlay. And I'll just move my hand in front of that again. Oh, that's pretty good. That's way faster than the Mobius. It's not bad. It's, I'm actually quite happy with that to be recording at 1080p 60 frames. And that concludes my review of the Runcam 2 action camera. Thanks to Banggood for providing me a discount in order to review this. Check out the referral links below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button, leave your comments, and I'll catch you next time.